this beauty. Set you down, get a thumbnail real quick. Bam, look at that pretty burgundy. That's right, 2007 Chrysler 300 C. You know it, she's got the Hemi. There's coolant everywhere. Pull this crap out of the way. They've put a radiator in it. It was in Virginia. She was boiling. Was it Ohio? I don't know. It's Virginia, Ohio. I don't remember what he said. This is from the car lot. Sold this car to him, I don't know, maybe six months ago. I don't think I filmed it. This is a replacement 5.7 Hemi. This motor, uh, another shop had the luxury of putting this engine in before we bought it at the auction to sell it the lot. They installed this motor without a damn dipstick. So you didn't know how much oil was in it or why. Don't know why they done it that way, but they did. So we took care of it. We tore it down. We put an oil, a new oil pan on it with a dipstick. She was good to go. Now we know how much oil is in it. No more oil leak, but now, now she's running hot. So I have done the preliminary checkles. The oil looks good. The coolant, well, it's leaking. It's leaking because it gets hot. When it gets hot, it starts to push it out everywhere. And one of those push them out everywhere just so happens to be the water pump. So she's super low. You look down in there, it's got all kinds of crusty fungus seeping out of the water pump. It's not a good sign. So we're gonna start, we're gonna throw a water pump on it. Uh, couldn't really get the system to leak yesterday for me. Sitting here, that's okay, it happens. So, I'm hoping there's nothing screwy in there. Where the other shop did the water pump but uh, it's one of those things you don't know like that that clip just it broke it broke it clean off we just stuck it back on there even our pipe's not hot yet i see a lot of zip ties holding wires out of the way don't like any of that either but what are you gonna do Let's get this air box off and get into it. All right. Oh yeah. I need to turn it off. All right. Thought we were about to have a secret meeting. Air boots it's off. Hot. It is a little warm. You can see all kinds of crusties seeping out around the seal and the water pump. She was getting hot. It happens. It's hot this time of year. That's what they do. As I mentioned, he said he was in the Virginia or something like that when this problem first started. And this is where he came back to, you know, because we're going to take care of it. So. I got a cool remote I can stop my video with now instead of having to touch all over the camera with my greasy paws. Meet the front I don't know which way the bell tensioner goes today. Ah! Butterfingers. Not working. Belts off. I can't even see anything, can you? Well, you don't even know where to look. Look right there. There you go. That's, 
a little better. My drain is on this side. He's been dumping the water in it to get it here, so I'm not worried about trying to save any of this antifreeze, so we'll just squeeze our arm down in here, get it on the drain. And try to catch up. Maybe a drop or two. <laughs> I think that might have been all I caught. <sighs> Not much in the system though. I need to make one of them Amazon wish lists or something. Because uh I've always wanted a pair of them fancy little pliers that are made to snap off these little connectors. That was so I don't do that. <laughs> Whatever. Let's try a different pair of knuckle busters. The local stores sell those fancy little pliers and they're hired damn camel cock. I mean, they're like 50 something bucks. You buy them in the store and I think that's uh, just ridiculous. See if any more cool it comes out. Not nah, too dry. Oh, wait till you get a load of this mess in here. Don't worry folks, it's a Hemi. I'm a Dodge guy. We did buy a thermostat for this one. The van that we just did the water pump on was a, uh, it was a cheapy cheapy. And the guy did not want to put thermostat in it because, uh, you know, with this one, this one's getting a thermostat. We will have to reuse the neck. And there's this coolant pipe right here that a lot of Chrysler stuff uses. 318s, 360s, 40s, things like that. Use this stupid little pipe. So we're gonna put some, what does Eric O call it? Panther P on it to help loosen that up right there. Somebody's been here before, it's got some silicone on it. So let's spray it down. Broke the end off of my bottle of <laughs> free all. So I was trying to like stab it on there. It's a whole can too, isn't that how it always works? I'll never drop an almost empty can. Brand new one, pow, knock the top right off over. And we're gonna get this belt tensioner off. It keeps you from seeing some of the bolts. set up. You gotta do the you gotta do the neutral drop on it, the rev her up and stab her on. And 
comes right off. Different size bolts too, make sure you don't remember where those go. Figure it out as you go along. I don't think I've got one. And they just keep going around the outside. Two trailer park girls go around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. On that one. No. Oh no. Alright, so I just I just pulled the somebody just stopped on to buy some wheels. That was their shitty sound of BMW leaving. Anyway, pull this. Hose out. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you can feel like it. But right now, I'm gonna pull this out and get a connector in my way back here. Pull the connector off. Now you can pick the hose up. And if you do the thing where you play your cards right, and then they go the pump right out of there. Here's our water pump. You can actually see all the places the gasket was starting to go and all the sludge that was happening. So the gasket's actually deformed and not seated correctly in a bunch of places. There's some of the nice brown rusty water that was in the system. So yeah, now we need to pull this tensioner off, thermostat housing, and I've got a new thermostat water pump gasket. Let's get it put together. So I did an oopsie, and uh, I thought you guys were recording and watching, and you weren't, so I was sitting there just do -do 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 -do, jib jabbering away. Put the new gasket on the new water pump, put the silicone on it to help hold the gasket while you fish it down in here. I'm still just chit chatting. I move the camera around, I start bolting everything up, I go down there, put the tension to pulley on, put the lower hose on, still just you know how I normally chit chat. And uh, I went to stop the camera, and when I went to hit the button to make it stop, it went bling like it was starting to record, and I was like, huh, what? And I looked. And I hadn't got any of it. So, <sighs> water pump's on. Everything's all bolted down. Um, I got the idler pulley on over here. All we got to do is get the tensioner put on, fish the belt up around all this mess, put the hose on, put the airbox on, put the cover on it, fill it full of coolant, bleed it, drive it, and uh, yeah, and put this connector back on. I guess I can go ahead and do that. So, all right, well, let's get to it again. Through the magic of video video editing, this is all back together. I'm going to reinstall the drain plug. Goes right there. I've got a ratchet so that we can loosen the bleeder port. Right there on the top of the water pump, and now we can start filling it. Full of the coolant.
Yeah. And these things are slow. Slow bleeders. So we'll come back. Right, so I let it sit there until it started puking, forgot my catch pan wasn't underneath it. Lost a little bit on the ground. What's new? It's okay. Let's go in here and fire it up. See if we can't get the heat going. So what we've got going on right now is it's over full on coolant. We're gonna keep it that way. I've got the heat on. We're gonna try to let it burp itself a little bit, get some more air out. Now, if you're still left over with more coolant than you need once it's bled, we can take some of the extractor and draw it out. But right now we're just gonna bleed it. So over full, <clears throat> the higher the coolant level in the reservoir, the higher the overall level is. So the reservoir is now higher than the rest of the cooling system and a lot of times that'll help get the air to burp back through there so if your water level is lower in here then there might be a high spot somewhere in the engine that's higher than your overflow reservoir and you won't be able to get that burp out of it so by having more coolant here it's more pressure and we'll try to help draw that bubble out so that's what we're doing all right so She's up to temperature. I got good heat on the inside. I just switched it back to air. So if you're trying to bleed your cooling system, see if the car is gonna run hot. If you're running your heater with your fan on, the heater works like a baby radiator. You know, it's inside your cabin and there's a fan on it, sucking all the hot air off. It'll actually help keep your engine cool. So if your car starts to run hot going down the road, you can switch it over to heat, turn the fan up. It'll help cool it down. But that also hurts you from a diagnostic standpoint, like me right now, trying to see if this car is gonna run hot, I need to cut that heat off now that I've got it bled because that's helping keep the engine cool and you don't want that. You want it to try to keep itself cool normally with its own little radiator and fans the way it's supposed to, regardless of your climate control setting. So once you got heat, turn the heat off and, uh, and then just let it sit here. So, our temperature's just a tick below the middle, which is perfect for these little hemis. And uh, now we'll just let it sit here and idle for a little bit. I'm gonna occasionally get in it, give it some beans, help push water through the system, and we'll just keep checking on it. So we're on our last leg of the course here. Everything is finished with the test drive. So he said it would overheat fairly quick. And, uh, able to even drive it to us it would overheat before they could do anything so that's why i had to have 
tone. So far, so good. Storm coming, holy cow. Super slow wind motors. One thirty five on the odometer. I really wish these Hemi's were better motors. I mean, I, like I said, I'm a big Dodge fan, but uh, these earlier Hemi's have their fair share of issues. And uh, this this car's already had a motor put in it, like I said, with buck thirty on it. I think it was sold to them with like one oh five ish. So. Temperature is still sitting just a tick underneath the halfway mark. That's perfect. We've got the AC cranking in here. I think it's got a bad blend door. It's not as cold on the driver's side. But we're not here to fix that. We're here to keep it forward heat. So we'll get back to the shop, and as long as she isn't making any puddles. We're good to go. All righty, so that's gonna wrap it up. 2007 Chrysler 300C with the 5.7 Hemi in it. She's mean, she's lean. She's got missing piece of chrome trim. You hear the cooling fans are running, they're, they're cycling on and off, keeping her temperature. Again, tick under that half mark. That's perfect. So I'll park it. We'll check it again first thing in the morning. Make sure we haven't lost any coolant. I'll get the customer a phone call. Tell them they can come pick it up. He's a really cool guy. A young Asian kid. Super nice. He likes his hammock. Let me tell you. Can't blame him. I like him too. See, cold fill max is still right above that, right below that. So, it, of course, it's not cold anymore. In the morning, I'll probably burp uh, a little bit more out, and then I'll drain uh, maybe like a liter or something out of it. I don't know yet. And then she should be good. So, nothing's wet, no new leaks. Boom. All right, we can move on to the next one. Thanks for watching, folks.